Hello my friends. Unbelievably it's today already exactly one year that I got the CRF 1000L Africa Twin from the shop. Last year 2016 on 9th of September I bought this bike with 2600 kilometers on the clock. It was a demo bike. Uh, so since then we have done exactly 12 months and about 21,000 kilometers together which includes one trip to Germany for example and also about 7,000 kilometers um, to uh, yeah, England and Wales this summer. So quite a few miles. And so far I can tell you I never regretted it. It's a great bike. Um, I have not had any issues. It has not uh, let me down in any way. A um, little bit different than the, quite different than the CCM450 unfortunately. Uh, so it has been 100% reliable so far. Um, there are small things which I do not like, which is the really missing fixing point for a luggage rack on the back. I think KTM has solved that more elegant and better uh, than Honda. Uh, so I'm using soft luggage and you will see there is a video also about soft luggage and uh, specifically also the Moscow Moto Reckless 80 which I'm using on that bike. Um, it has just this week been at the 24,000 kilometer service. Uh, to my surprise, the mechanic told me he had found quite some offset of the of the valves. Um, I think it was two inlets and one exhaust valve, which we are far off. So far that he actually called Honda in Sweden to ask if this is a printing error in the workshop manual. This makes me a little bit disappointed because I bought the bike under the uh, condition that I thought well Honda makes the best engines in the world and the most long-lasting ones and especially, especially the Africa Twin, the old Africa Twin had this fantastic reputation of never dying. So let's see how it will go on uh, in the future with that bike. Um, my fuel consumption actually if you're interested in that is around 4.1 to 4.3 liters 100 kilometers. So with that almost 19 liter tank uh, I'm getting quite a bit over 300 kilometers, 350 should be a problem. I've not tried it really out, I haven't run it dry, but maybe I could make 400 kilometers with it. Um, so that is great. Uh, I don't see any need to add an auxiliary tank or buy a, a adventure version with even a larger tank which would add even more weight. Uh, the handling is great, the suspension is okay. I need to tweak that still a little bit. Uh, sometimes it feels a little bit bumpy on the front. So maybe I need to reduce a little bit of the uh, preload on the front. But otherwise I have not done any modifications or upgrades with leans or whatever. Uh, on the suspension system. I'm quite happy with that and as you see I'm not the tallest and not the heaviest guy. Um, I guess with the gear on I'm somewhere between 80-85 kilos maybe. Um, almost all muscles of course. Um, so that should be actually the standard weight for which the suspension actually was designed. And if I'm carrying luggage, it's not more than maybe 20, 25 kilos maximum. So I'm well within the specifications that Honda has probably set up for the bike and wouldn't need to do any suspension upgrade. Let's talk a moment also about tires, because the tire I've been using for almost all of those 21,000 kilometers I think something like 19 to 20,000 is the Heidenau K60 and I'm with full intention saying tire in singular because this is still the first tire which I put on after I replaced it with from, uh, from the original tire which I find not suitable for gravel riding. So I'm still riding the very first Heidenau K60 now for 19,000 kilometers on that bike and you see there's still quite some negative profile left still about I guess 3-4 millimeters uh, down to the wear mark. So this will last definitely that season and for next spring I'm gonna put on a new one. Probably the same one again or the Mitas, um, how it is called, E7 I think. Um, the Heidenhaus work nicely for my riding style and the continuous strip in the middle actually gives them quite a long lifetime um, both on, on gravel roads and uh, and uh, asphalt and you have seen the road I've been riding here this is not so rough stuff that I would need knobbies on it um, so that tire for that bike and that usage is for me the best compromise tire 
I have two tips today for those of you who have an Africa Twin. The one problem is the mounting of the GPS. Um, most people attach it to the frame for the windscreen and actually a Honda rep at the, uh, has told me that this is intended to be mounted to be used for GPS. But it's vibrating very heavily. Even if you have a lighter GPS like the Montana uh, series, Montana 600 series on it. But with this even a bit heavier 276CX, I don't think this will last very long. And there are reports on the internet about people who have actually broken this subframe there. So my idea was to use the two most dirty fixing points I can find anywhere here, where everything, mostly everything is plastic. So I'm using two screws of the handlebar clamps. I put in longer screws and a little uh, distance in there. And then I have an aluminum uh, plate on the top with an L profile below, which makes it very strong. And you see I have two rum balls on it, the standard small one and the next larger number. Because I also noticed that even with that small ball, if you tighten it really hard, if you tighten the, the connection arm really hard, it's still creeping. But this ball, this is rock solid and the 500 grams of the 276CX rests there really nice and stable. Moved it to the left also so that I can still see the instruments down there. So that was tip one of the day. The second tip actually is how to get probably on and off a high motorcycle. I've been previously recording a video showing you how I handle it once I'm on it um, by simply moving to the side a little bit and then I can get one foot down. But how do you get on and off? Some people are using the side center stand, holding the motorcycle, putting all the weight on the left foot back and then swing the, the, the right leg over. Ah, now imagine that poor side stand down there with this tiny link which needs to hold the motorcycle and all your weight. You're maybe up to far over 300 kilograms um, on this tiny link down there. And even some motorcycle manufacturers, unfortunately not Honda, but KTM, are telling you that the side stand is not intended to carry the weight of the motorcycle and the rider. Um, so this in the long run will wear out the linkage down there, uh, maybe even if you're unlucky bend the side stand or break it. So the better way to get on and off is to have the handlebar all to the right and then I have my, my knee quite wide bent like that and just basically getting the knee over and stretching the leg out again. Very simple, you can get off and on like that as long as the handlebar is to the left, to the right. It doesn't work really well if you put it the other way around. Then just lift it up, get the side stand up and ready to ride. To get off, vice versa, side stand down, knee in a sharp angle and off again. This of course doesn't work that well if you have luggage here on the back. For that one I have a different version. I admit it looks a little bit funny. Um, normally I'm putting the side stand up first holding the bike on the handlebar with quite a long arm and just putting basically my right leg over and just slide down like that. And I'm already ready to go. So to get off I can reverse that. Only disadvantage you might make your seat a little bit dirty <laughs> and if you have a very tight sitting motorcycle pant you might actually not like that.